Harry Potter and Percy Jackson are two of my most favorite series of all time. With that being said, while reading these two series, I've seen many similarities between the two, and in this video, I made a list of top 10 similarities between Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. But before getting into it, I had to give a spoiler warning for both Percy Jackson and Harry Potter. So with that, let's get started. Number 10. Similar Creatures both Rick Riordan and J.K. Rowling took inspiration from ancient mythology, folklore, and many other old stories, and it's seen throughout their books. J.K. and Rick didn't make or invent all the creatures in their series, but took them from tales that were passed on to generation to generation, and some of those creatures are centaurs. For Percy Jackson, we see the party ponies and, of course, Chiron, and for Harry Potter, we see Ferenz and other centaurs in the Forbidden Forest. Another creature are Sphinxes. In Percy Jackson, we see the Sphinx in the Battle of the Labyrinth to test Percy and Annabeth, while in Harry Potter, we of course saw this in the third task in the Triumphs of the Tournament, and surprisingly enough, the Sphinxes appear in both the fourth book of each series. And finally, the three-headed dogs. In The Lightning Thief, Percy, Annabeth, and Grover were tasked to get Pat's Cerberus, the three-headed dog in the Underworld, while in the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry, Ron, and Hermione encounter Fluffy. Also, both dogs are said to be guarding something. For Cerberus, it's the Underworld, while for Fluffy, it's the Sorcerer's Stone. And in both series, the main heroes are able to get past these creatures. For Percy Jackson, Annabeth uses a red ball to distract Cerberus, while for Harry Potter, Harry played a flute to distract Fluffy. Number 9. The Sirens and the Mirror of Erised in Percy Jackson, the sirens are sea nymphs used to lure sailors to their deaths by showing something the person truly desires in their life. They sing a song that makes you want to come to them, and while you're getting closer, you unknowingly come to your death. This is closely related to the Mirror of Erised, because like the sirens, it shows you what your heart desires, and the mirror doesn't exactly kill you, but it makes people go insane, thinking that their life was worthless because they couldn't get what the mirror was showing them. So, on both parts, they show you what you want the most in the world, but there's also an after effect. Number 8. Kronos and Voldemort Kronos is the main villain in the first five books of Percy Jackson, while Voldemort is, of course, the main villain in Harry Potter. The two of them have a lot in common. First, they were both said to be defeated a long time ago. Kronos getting thrown to the pit of Tartarus by Zeus after the Titanomachy, and Voldemort getting defeated by Harry himself because of Lily's loving sacrifice. Second, both of them are threatening to go back when the main hero comes into the magical world. And third, they both use the human host as they were too weak to get to their own body. For Voldemort, he used Quirrell as a host, and for Kronos, he of course used Luke. The final similarity between these two villains is that both of them come back in the fourth book of each series. For Voldemort, it was during the Goblet of Fire, after Harry and Cedric touched the cup, while for Kronos, it was after Kronos used Luke's body and took over it, which happened in the Battle of the Labyrinth, the fourth book in Percy Jackson. Number 7. The Half-Blood Prince and the Last Olympian The Half-Blood Prince is the sixth and second to the last book in the Harry Potter series, while The Last Olympian is the fifth and final book in the Percy Jackson series. These books, in my opinion, are very similar with each other, because in both books, we learn major information we weren't given throughout the series, specifically the main villain's past. For the Half-Blood Prince, we learn the past of Voldemort, about how he was one of the last descendants of Salazar Slytherin, and that he was born to a witch named Mary Pigaunt and a muggle named Tom Riddle Sr. We also learn how Voldemort would eventually rise to power, make his horcruxes, and start the two wizarding wars, and become one of the darkest wizards in history. Meanwhile, the last Olympian shows Luke's past, how his mother went insane because of the curse Hades placed on the oracle, and how his anger and rage against the gods started to form and make him go against them and side with Kronos. On top of that, the book is named after a person, Severus Snape being the half-blood prince, and Hestia being the last Olympian. Number 6. The Rivals In both Percy Jackson and Harry Potter, they came across a person who becomes their enemy in the first book. In Harry Potter, we have Draco Malfoy, 
and in Percy Jackson, we have Clarice LaRue. Also, these rivals have groups of friends who backs them up. For Malfoy, it's Crabbe and Goyle, whereas for Clarice, it's the Ares cabin. Another similarity is that in one of the books in both series, we as an audience feels bad for the rivals. For Malfoy, we feel bad for him around the Hapblood Prince when he's forced to kill Dumbledore, and through this, we see the pressure he was going through, especially with his father Lucius Malfoy. For Clarice, we feel bad for her around the Sea of Monsters when we see her father, the God of War Ares, threaten and pressure her to complete the quest to save Camp Hapblood. Number 5. The Prophecy the prophecy for both series connects and intertwines the entire series as a whole, and both prophecies talk about the fate of the main character. For Harry Potter, it's if Harry would be able to kill Voldemort in the end, and for Percy Jackson, it's if Percy would make the right decision as a wrong decision would lead to the destruction of Olympus. On top of that, the prophecy could have been about someone else. For Harry Potter, the prophecy could have been about Neville, as Neville was born on July 30, and the prophecy said, born as the seventh month dies, meaning the end of July. For Percy Jackson, it could have been about Thalia Grace and Nico and Bianca D'Angelo, as they were all kids of the big three, aka Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. Number 4. The Trio I would say that the trio concept is quite prominent in other fantasy books, and Harry Potter and Percy Jackson is no exception. For Harry Potter, we of course have the Golden Trio, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and in Percy Jackson, we have Percy, Annabeth, and Grover, and the main characters befriend them at the magical world in the first book. Percy and Harry are very similar, but I'm saving that for another section of this video. So moving forward, the girl is sort of a know-it-all, Hermione being really into reading, and for Annabeth, it's because she's the daughter of Athena. The boy, meanwhile, is a kind, loyal, and sort of insecure best friend and all three of them encounter life-threatening situations and stick together in both series. Number 3. Camp Hapblood and Hogwarts Camp Hapblood is the safe haven and training facility of Greek demigods, and Hogwarts is a boarding school for wizards and witches. These two places have so much in common. 1. Both Hogwarts and Camp Hapblood have huge amounts of land. Two. Once you get there, you get sorted into your house slash cabin. For Harry Potter, you get sorted into your Hogwarts house. And for Percy Jackson, you get sorted into your godly parents' house. And three, both facilities cannot use technology. For Harry Potter, it's explained by Hermione that muggle technology can't be used in Hogwarts because there's too much magic in the air. And for Percy Jackson, they don't use it because it's a signal and bait for monsters. Number 2. The Main Characters, aka Harry Potter and Percy Jackson There are many similarities between the two of them, and I've dedicated this entire section for it. So let's start. Both of them are from bad environments and households. For Harry Potter, it's because of the Dursleys, and for Percy Jackson, it's because of his stepfather Gabe Ogliano. Both of them are said to be special. For Harry Potter, it's because he survived the killing curse and was dubbed the boy who lived. And for Percy, it's because he was the son of Poseidon, or a demigod of the Big Three. This was really special, because nobody has seen a demigod of the Big Three in years, because Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades made it back to not have any more demigod children in order to avoid a prophecy. Both of them were described to have black messy hair and green eyes, and the green eyes were said to come from one of their parents. For Harry, it's his mother Lily's eyes, and for Percy, it's Poseidon's eyes. Both of them are pushed into the magical world and forced to fight a villain that was thought dead long ago, and both of them are sassy and very, as in, very loyal to their family and friends. Percy having the fatal flaw of personal loyalty, and Harry willing to literally sacrifice himself for the sake of others when Voldemort told him to come to the Forbidden Forest. And number one. The Silena, Luke, and Snape parallel. I think one of the most shocking similarities is this parallel, so let's go over each character one at a time. Silena Beauregard was the daughter of Aphrodite, and was the traitor to Camp Hapblood as Luke charmed her and made her give tons of information to Kronos. Luke Castellan is the main villain in Percy Jackson, and he constantly betrayed, manipulated, and tried to kill the main characters countless times. 
and Severus Snape was a Death Eater who gave a lot of information to Voldemort, and was always a shady character to readers, no matter how many times Dumbledore said he was on the good side. So, the first similarity. They were all working for the bad guys, and they ended up betraying the main heroes. The second similarity. They all died to repent for what they've done. Luke killing himself and fulfilling the Great Prophecy as the hero, Silena pretending to be Clarice and fighting that dragon during the Battle of Manhattan, and Snape dying because of Nagini. Excluding Luke out of this, Snape and Silena have another similarity, because what motivated to do what they did was because of love. Silena doing this for Luke because Luke wanted to kill her boyfriend Bikendorf, and Snape doing all that because of Lily's death. So how about you? Do you have any more similarities? Let me know in the comments down below.